Okay, so this is a concept I came up with for energy storage that seems to be fairly efficient. Its efficiency will be limited by your air pump and your uh, water generator, which uh, gener those tend to have, you know, between 60 and 90% efficiency. If you get two 90% efficiencies, then this would be fairly, very, very, very good for long-term energy storage. It's very uh, space efficient, I guess, volume efficient. Anyways, it does require specific things. If you have a 10 meter tank, that's a 10 meter tall tank, right? Or 11 meter tall tank, and you have a base of about 10, uh, oh, you have a base of about one cubic meter. So 10 meters tall, one cubic, I mean, one square meter base for the entire side of it, right? So the tank can hold 11 meters, but say you fill it with only 10 meters. And at the bottom, you put a chamber that had an orifice you can open and close, and a air pump attached to it to pump it full of air. You can store the uh, you can store about 10 kilowatts in that, which is which which is fairly impressive. Um, yeah, so it's 10 kilowatts. It's a huge battery, to be honest. But it again, it's it's very very. Uh, it would of course require, uh, depending on your efficiency as well. But yeah, it's very, very uh, space efficient. Uh, you can, this is actually similar to calculating uh, your hydroelectric power that you'd get out of a uh, system. Uh, and the, the concept there is for every one meter, you drop one kilo, I mean one uh, cubic meter of water, you get one kilowatt. So one cubic meter of water drops one meter and gives you one kilowatt. It's not exact, but it's a rule of thumb that you can run by. Anyway, the system here is uh, similar to, I guess, the balloon systems that you probably see for water storage. But this one actually has less moving parts. Uh, not in this case, just because I have something here. But actually, even still in that case. But yeah, this is uh, less likely to fail if you just move this pump or move this seal to the top. Which I can't do because it's attached to the tank. Anyways, the uh, concept is system. simple. The concept is simple. The tank is full of air, you have an open bottom, you allow the water itself to directly influence your uh, air pressure inside the tank, and the air pressure in the tank will match that of the water, the water pressure in its area. So when I release this, it releases air through this tube, which runs to the rear tank, which is also filled with water, which then pressurizes well, which then, after being pressurized, runs water back into the original tank. Now, this doesn't generate energy. It stores energy for future use. Uh, again, it seems to be very, uh, like, highly efficient for space. I'm not sure why it's not done. If you can think of a reason why, uh, you can leave me a comment below. Um... I haven't seen any patents on this, but there might be some, again, because it's efficient, and I'm sure it might have flaws, which are, are the reason why it's not in use. But again, yeah. So let's say you uh, let's say you had access to Lake Superior, and you had access to putting a tank at the bottom of it that was... Oh, and actually, this is a cool thing, too. The tank, since it's going to be open at one end, could be made of literally anything, as long as it'll keep its shape and will sink. So it has to, the the weight of something on it, or the weight of its bottom rim, has to be more than the uh, the buoyancy it'll produce when it's full of air. But it can be, it could, if you can make it out of paper, you can make it out of paper, because the pressure won't crush it there. Or the pressure won't crush it even if you put it in the mirror on a trench in the, uh, in the ocean. Because the bottom is empty. It means the inner pressure and the outer pressure will match. Your limiting factor will actually be your tubing, because your tubing has to go from that pressure all the way up to uh, 14 psi, which is air pressure, one atmosphere, whatever you want to, uh, whatever you want to use. Anyways, that will be your limiting factor, and you can buy 500 psi air tube, which means you can, uh, if you could get 600 psi air tube, which I couldn't find, you could actually have liquid water at the bottom of, air, of Lake Superior. And you could use that as your power source, and that that's very, very, very efficient for using uh for storing energy. Oh, uh, but yeah. Anyways, that's uh somewhat besides the point, but not really. Anyways, 
this method stores the energy as compressed air. The compressed air uh, runs through a tube and doesn't have to run to a secondary tank. I just did because it's easier to see. And uh, I am thinking of using this for something else. And I can't think of a good way to make a generator that'll run in such low power of air because air is so fluid. But water, I think I can definitely use to uh, run maybe an LED or something. Uh, yeah, but the point is the compressed air pressurized secondary tank. Secondary tank runs water out. And then to fill it back up, you end up just recompressing this. And again, your uh, the energy you can get from a system like this depends on your depth and your volume of your tank. And that's literally it. It's the volume of your tank, right? Which is the volume of the water you're displacing times the depth of the tank. Right? So one cubic meter dropping one foot is one kilowatt. I mean, one cubic meter dropping one meter it's one kilowatt. At the bottom of Lake Superior, 400 meters, all right? That one cubic meter of uh, displaced air pressurized to the pressure there, which would be like uh, 500 PSI or nearly so, would give you 400 kilowatts. So I'm not sure why we don't use this. Again, you can comment below. I would appreciate it if you uh, can tell me why we don't use something like this, considering how efficient it seems to be. Again, I'm, you know, I'm no uh, full-on engineer yet, but it's a fairly simple concept. It seems like it's, uh, there, there are other concepts using air water pressure. The uh, balloon one is one I saw, but that one has more moving parts, more chance of failure than this. Uh, I, I thought the open the opening at the bottom might be a problem due to animals, but if you just have grating here on the top of it and you never go past that point with the water, it's not really a problem. You could have literally a, a open bell going in both directions that's 10 meter by 10 meter, and it would almost never need cleaning. Uh, so yeah, I can't I can't think of why this would be a big issue. Uh, anyways, yeah, comment below. Tell me what you think. Uh, tell me what you think of this system, of course. Um, I think I might end up using it to water my plants because this will this will run for this will run for a good amount of time, and these plants only need about a gallon of water. And yeah, with all the for all the sun I'm getting. Uh, but thank you. Bye.